They didn't? I thought they were going to hire him. Isn't he going out to somewhere out west to do it? Somewhere out west, yes, but Liberty didn't hire Brandon. I'll agree. I mean, Yeah, that's not what I want. I'm looking for something. Second ear. Oh, it's not the same thing. My bad. <sighs> Where'd it gone to? There we go. Oh man, that's not it. What the what? Oh man. All right, anyway, forget about that. So, so I, I feel like I'm not entirely faithfully communicating the totality of the idea here because I have been like <sighs> truncating the discussion just to Mobius transformations for the most part. It's so much more than that. It's so much more than that. So like this one, if I want to do um, a quarter disc for example and um, I'll stick with like this. So I, I want zero. I want one up here. All right. And like zero down, zero on this part. All right. So I'm trying to solve Laplace's equation on this quarter disk. All right. Well. Oh, see, the thing is, it'll turn itself off in about two minutes. This is 105. <laughs> yeah, it'll probably be fine, but... Do I get it there? I guess since it's, it's, that's actually true. Oh, what? I tried to do something. <laughs> it's okay. Jeff came in like 25 minutes late, so we still got like a half hour class left. <laughs> right? No. All right. So, um, let's see here. Whoop. So this quarter disc, you could do something like a quarter disc with that previous one. What you do is think about it in stages. So I think about like Z here it maps to, you know, Z maps to uh, Z maps to Z squared. And that will take that. What, what, is, what, is the, what does the square map do to that? It takes the i, I pi over 2. So this here is i. This is 0. OK, this is part of the unit circle. To be clear, you hit that with a square map, you get a half disk where the, this thing maps to that. Like that, right? And now you've got 0 here, and you've got 1 up here, right? But we know what we can. We know what we can do with. We just solve that problem, right? We can send that. We can send that z squared. We can map to our handy dandy one plus z squared over you know one minus z squared map. Yeah, and that is going to take this thing and map it into. Let's see here. Where did the, okay, so the, this one goes straight up. 
and that one goes straight over like that. And then you've got, you know, and we, 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 know, already, we know we can solve the uh, Laplace's equation over here. So we, could, we can do it in stages, you see. We can take this quarter disk and we can map it to the half disk. And then we can map it to this quarter plane. We solve it here, which means we can pull it back to a solution over here. Specifically, the solution would be this, phi of z is equal to, what's my, I do uh, psi of, in this case, 1 plus z squared over 1 minus z squared. But um, the, it's 2 over pi argument, right? That is a solution to Laplace's equation on the quarter disk. Now this is an example of conformal mapping where we have not used just the Mobius transformation, right? Squaring is not a Mobius transformation, right? Hmm. Questions? Yeah. So why does Well, we talked about this a while ago, but if we have f of z not e to the i theta, and you square it, what happens? You get z naught squared e to the 2i theta, right? So if here you have 0 less than or equal to z naught less than or equal to 1, and you have 0 less than or equal to theta less than or equal to pi over 2, that describes the initial quarter sector in polar coordinates, well, then what happens? Well, you see 0 less than or equal to z naught squared less than or equal to 1, and 0 less than or equal to 2 theta less than or equal to pi, which is the polar description of the half disk. So that's what squaring does, is it, it, it doubles your sectors in terms of their angle. If we had a cube, we would have got three quarters of it, the plane, right? I hope I showed you guys enough that you can do the homework and at least understand the spirit of this. Like, so let me kind of give you an analogy for what's happened. Um, I am not a woodworker. All right, like I take wood and I like take screws and I like cut it and I put it together. And people who don't know better think that I have done some decent work, but they're wrong. I know nothing, right? I know how to save myself $1,000 on making a kitchen table because you can make one yourself from about $100 of wood. Like, do that. Don't ever buy a kitchen table for thousands of dollars if you do, you're an idiot. If you already have, I'm sorry, but you're still an idiot. But, um, <laughs> that's right, double down. Um, real carpenters know dozens of techniques, joinery, all kinds of fancy things, right? Like there's so much more to it than just slapping pieces of wood together and sanding away your mistakes. In the same way here, I have shown you how to like nail two by fours together. There is a much deeper idea here which comes with a mastery. What's the mastery you need? To really master this technique, you need to fully understand a whole bunch of different complex functions and how they take one set to another. Completely understanding how they transform one shape to another gives you license to take solutions, easy solutions to this shape and pull them back to a solution over here in that shape. And the more you know about transformations, the more different cases you can do. It's an art, which I've only showed you the start of. Now, this is of particular interest to me because this is one of like the open problems that I'm trying to solve in hypercomplex analysis is to do this similar idea, but for mappings not over the complex numbers, but over different number systems. So um, I'll, I'll kind of explain some of that to you next class. The last couple problems in your homework are on hyper complex analysis. So I think this more or less marks the end of complex analysis proper. So 
Sorry, it's, it's been a nice semester. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs>